as of late, as I have been pondering in my dungeon, I've been thinking about game design as I've been working on my homebrew game. And as I ponder game design, I've been thinking about it in a very broad sense. Um, I've been thinking of concepts that have um, been a great debate between uh, designers and dungeon masters and, and players alike. Now, my opinions have changed vastly since I've been watching all the RPG uh, YouTube channels. So, if you'd like to argue these ideas, um, remember to keep it from being uh, personal. We're, we're discussing these broad concepts that can be interpreted in many, many ways. <laughs> More than even an elven mind could comprehend with thousands of years of pondering. <laughs> so, uh, this, this debate will not be solved in a simple sentence or a, a, a simple review. Uh, but, I will begin with three concepts that seem to encapsulate everything uh, you need to consider when creating a game of your own. And these are um, the concept of a perfect game, um, uh, game balance, and game realism. Those are the three concepts that are riddles to, to all who partake in this Strange endeavor. <laughs> so, the perfect game. Many say the perfect game is something that could never exist. Because each game has its unique world and its u uniqueness to it. Um, a a sci-fi game will have things in it that a fantasy game won't. And making a universal game was an idea that uh, early, early in, in, in game designs, like in GURPS, um, but GURPS itself becomes its own game. And while you can do lots of genres, it does have its limitations. And it makes it so an idea of a perfect game could not exist. I think the the idea of a perfect game is something that simulates uh, reality, the perfect simulation to test yourself, to test your mind in ways that you can only be tested through the imagination. <laughs> yes, indeed. But when you boil a game down to its core concept, it is usually ways to determine a yes or no answer through basically the flip of a coin, uh, even through a 20-sided die such as this. Oh, look. Natural 20. Upside down. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's basically you're finding a yes or no answer and adding some bonuses to to adjust it, but it's still just yes or no. Um, other games are rock, paper, scissors games, and, and when you boil a game down like that, how can it be a perfect simulation? But it is something that I do wonder about, especially when I stare into my dungeon master's orb, and when I see the perfect game, it would look something like this. This is from Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy, where he brings up the idea of psycho-history. <laughs> no, not psycho as in crazy history. Psycho-history is an idea of combining uh, history, 
sociology and um, mathematical statistics in such a way to where you can predict the future to simulate realities. And one thing that fascinates Dungeon Master Doom is that the concepts of, of history are within the, your game world. The concepts of sociology are shown in how maybe elves and dwarves interact. <laughs> and the mathematical statistics are there on your character sheet. So, maybe there is more involved in these games if you look at it even deeper. <laughs> the next concept is game balance. Game balance is something confused uh, often, I think, with uh, game dynamics. And I think the best way to understand what game balance is, is by looking at imbalanced games. Oh, a game like Rifts is imbalanced. Every character, whenever you make a character in that game, you need to have a very high dexterity score, or else you are at a severe disadvantage. And an imbalance happens when you can't have a diversity of statistics. It's when everyone has to start building a, a similar build. It's also like this in uh, Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons. Everyone needs to have a perception skill. You need to put skill ranks into it. So that's an imbalanced statistic. Now, the dynamics is different than balance, but it's often confused with it. Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, a warrior is powerful at level 1, but weak at level 20. Whereas a wizard is very weak at level 1, but extremely powerful at level 20. Now, this is not imbalance. This is dynamics. And it's it makes the game interesting. When I played World of Warcraft, yes, Dungeon Master Doom played World of Warcraft for far too long in his gaming career. <laughs> well, in, in that game, the secret to making it fun was putting the character classes in a so-called out of balanced, where, like, for a time, they would make a new patch, and paladins would become extremely overpowered. And then once people started figuring that out, they'd put out a new patch. And then orc shamans would be extremely overpowered for a time. And they're just shif shifting it. It's not a balance. It's a dynamic. So, uh, yes, it, it's, it, it's easily confused. Now, lastly, the last idea... Is, is game realism. And there is a secret to game realism. And that is you bring the realism to a game. And as a dungeon master, when you teach a game, you want to make it seem as real as possible. You're suspending the disbelief of the players. So, one thing that's uh, interesting uh, to make it easier for me to make a, a game feel real, the game system to feel real, it's better when I have more abstract um, gaming concepts or statistics, like hit points, which bothers people. People want to have the hit points mean specific things, so it's very hard to say... Um, Oh, exactly what happens when you're struck by a sword and lose um, hit points. But depending on the situation, if, if a player questions such a thing, uh, you need to imagine how this could happen and interpret it. And your interpretations bring realism to the game. Yes. So those are my opinions on these three broad concepts of debate about role-playing game design. But I'm not done just yet. I will leave you with 
a riddle. <laughs> now, Dungeon Master Doom will be the first to admit that he is far from the perfect Dungeon Master. And Dungeon Master Doom is not exactly a balanced individual. <laughs> But, Dungeon Master Doom is very real, but only in the ways that he is unreal. <laughs>